In this video, I'll explain a problem that Bitefix members tell us is commonly experienced by dentists, the disappearing crown space. What I mean by this is that when a dentist goes to place a crown on a rear molar, having taken great impressions or scans and had the crown made by a reliable lab, it fits well on the prepped tooth, but when the patient is asked to close, they hit hard on the crown. This is what we're calling the disappearing crown space problem. There was plenty of room for the crown to fit when you took the impression, even before removing the temp. But on placing the new crown, it seems like the space has shrunk. The only way to make this crown fit is by grinding deeply into its structure. The available space for the crown has disappeared. I have some good news for you. First, you're not alone. The majority of dentists experience this issue. And second, the reason it happens is easy to understand, as you're about to find out. The not so good news is that applying this simple understanding may take some intense CE to fully master. I'll give you some recommendations for how to get started on that CE journey at the end of this video. There are three simple principles to comprehend to understand what's going on. The first principle is that a healthy masticatory system has these elements. A healthy TMJ, the geometry of the condyle and jaws in harmony with the maxilla, and when the teeth come together, the condyle will be fully seated in the fossa, pressing hard against the TMJ disc. The disc is shown in orange and is made of material that is essentially incompressible in the short term. You can see that the strong closing muscles guide the condyle to that position, as long as the lower pterygoid muscle is relaxed and not fighting that motion. The second principle is that some people have jaw geometries that are not in harmony with the maxilla or have displaced TMJ discs so the condyle doesn't sit in its fully seated position. Here we show a jaw geometry out of harmony with the maxilla. When this jaw closes with the condyle fully seated, one pair of teeth hit before the others. One pair of teeth bearing all the closing force is extremely uncomfortable, so the nerves signal that discomfort to the brain, which then tells the lower pterygoid muscle to pull the jaw forward until more teeth connect and things feel more comfortable. The third principle is that of proprioception. Our brain doesn't like banging two teeth together all the time, so without us having to think about it, it will guide the jaw around the expected interference, so teeth only contact in the comfortable bite. This bite is variously called the acquired bite, the learned bite, the habitual bite, or MIP for maximum intercuspation. The function of navigating to the acquired bite is called proprioception and is a very finely tuned function, as you'll find out in a minute. Some people will learn to function with their condyle in that forward position, so the condyle never or rarely returns to its fully seated position. Their lower pterygoid muscle is tense most of the time. So there we have the three principles needed to understand the disappearing crown space problem. A healthy jaw will be fully seated when all the teeth come together. A not so healthy jaw will be out of joint when the teeth come together in MIP. And we have a nearly unconscious awareness called proprioception that guides the jaw into MIP, avoiding the premature contact. Now, let's look at the disappearing crown space problem. The animation starts by showing we have the situation where there's a premature contact on closing with the condyle fully seated. It shows the nerves working to get the jaw out of that position into the more comfortable MIP or habitual bite. It then shows the proprioception system guiding the jaw straight to the habitual bite position. Unfortunately, proprioception doesn't work while we're sleeping. When the teeth are apart, the lower pterygoid muscle relaxes and the jaw settles back towards its fully seated position. Now, when the patient closes, the two molars collide. While we're sleeping, the body's mechanism for getting rid of this premature interference is to grind. This eventually results in one of the teeth fracturing, so it needs to be crowned. This involves taking an impression, prepping the tooth, and then fitting a temp. With typical animation simplicity, we show all three of these operations by simply changing the molar to a prepped tooth, and the impression and the temp, both of which are in the shape of the tooth we're replacing, are shown by a black outline. The 
patient is awake, so the jaw closes, guided by proprioception, into the patient's habitual bite. The impression or temp fits perfectly as we would expect it to. The patient goes away and is happy as the temp mimics the old tooth. Now the patient returns, and the dentist removes the temp. We represent this by having the black line disappear. This is where the magic of our proprioceptive system comes into play. In the time between the temp being removed and the permanent crown placed, the patient closes their mouth, perhaps doing it a few times. The proprioception system realizes the interference it was avoiding is no longer there, so on closing it allows the lower pterygoid muscle to relax and the jaw to settle back towards its fully seated position. We show the condyle going all the way to fully seated, but any movement back from the habitual bite position is going to produce the same result. The dentist now comes to fit the crown, and the patient opens to receive it. We use the same black outline to represent the crown, so you know we're not changing its shape. Now, when the patient closes, they are starting from a fully seated position, or at least one that is different from the habitual bite position. And... Oh dear, the tooth doesn't fit. Shown by the upper tooth penetrating through the black outline of the crown. To make things fit, the outline of the crown is going to have to be changed considerably by drilling away all that material that is overlapping the upper tooth. If you find yourself in this position, it is needless to say you're going to be asking what on earth is going on? We conclude by contrasting the two situations. The expected fit with the jaw in its habitual position on the left, and the actual fit when the jaw is settled backwards on the right. Once you understand the concepts, it's not difficult to see why the crown space disappears. Changing your procedures so you avoid the problem is more involved. I'll put links to organizations that provide training in these principles below, and here's a self-study option that will get you started. If you'd like to keep learning with animations like the ones you saw in this video, then we'd suggest using our study aid in conjunction with Dr. Dawson's definitive book, Functional Occlusion, From TMJ to Smile Design. The animations walk side by side each chapter to give you the best visual and content-rich learning experience to take you to a solid understanding of the TMJ and occlusion. The book is available through Amazon or through Dr. Dawson's publishing company, Widium, and the study aid is available through us. I've put the links in the description below.